I really am honored. Hey, listen, if you don't know me, uh, my name is, uh, is Preston Brown. Uh, yes, there are two Prestons in this church. It's crazy, right? Uh, it's funny, me and uh, Pastor Preston came to uh, Generation about the same time. And, um, and I just got so used to like everyone wanting to talk to Pastor Preston that every time that we were around each other, if someone said Preston, I would look around and they'd say, no, no, the other Preston. I'm like, oh, okay. So then people just started saying my name, Preston, and I just kept walking. Like, oh, you're talking about, oh, my bad. I thought you were talking about, no, because Pastor Preston, he's the man. He's the man, the myth, the legend. So, um, so yeah, my name is Preston. But if you do know me, then you know that I, uh, I love um, y'all's kids. Um, I am usually back in the kids' ministry. I uh, get the opportunity to serve back there, kindergarten through fifth grade. If that's where your kids go, I get to see them every single weekend. And it really is just such an honor. And um, really, my, my wife laughs at me because sometimes I'll call y'all's kids my own kids. I'm like, yeah, my kids back there today, man, they were just high on Jesus, you know. So I love y'all's kids. Thank y'all for uh, letting us being able to uh, pastor them, direct them, and uh, man, we're doing some incredible things back there, which I'll get to in just a second. Um, but if you guys know anything about my story uh, about here recently, um, not, not even a year ago, I, I got married, um, and so they got a picture of me and my wonderful wife here. Um, this was on our wedding day. I, I'm married up, I know. I'm married up, and um, I love my wife. Um, so much. Uh, she's the biggest blessing to me. She really is. And um, I'm just grateful, grateful for her. Um, what's been, really been cool this year is that uh, if you know our kids director, Miss Kelly Russell, she, she's awesome. Kelly, you do a great job at leading our kids. And um, it's, it's really cool getting to serve under you. And um, we, we, we had this great idea like, well, we want to create our kids ministry to be like our adult uh, ministry, or, or we want to create our kids' experience like an adult experience, and so we're like, "Hey, let's try live speaking." And it started with just one weekend, and, um, and and now for the past two months, the whole month of September and the whole month of October, we've been doing live speaking back in the kids' ministry, which basically just means we have a, a speaker up there teaching the Word of God every single weekend. We used to do a video curriculum, if you guys didn't know that, um, but now we have live speaking, and we've seen kids take next steps. We've seen kids, uh, you know, get baptized. Uh, we've seen kids accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so it's just been really, really cool these past two months. I mean, we've had tons of speakers, um, whether they serve in G Kids or maybe they just have a gift in speaking. We're just like, hey, you want to come speak? And uh, it's been really cool, y'all. It's been really cool. And uh, that kind of leads to how I got asked to speak. And um, as you guys know, Pastor Brandon already said it, but uh, Pastor Brandon, he is uh, in the kids' wing right now, and he's actually preaching to our kids right now. How cool is that? And, uh, I mean, come on, it's our lead pastor. I mean, that, that's special, y'all. That's special. I mean, I, I'm just honored. I'm honored. I'm honored to serve under a pastor that will uh, care for the kids as, just as much as you guys. And um, so it leads into how I got asked to speak. It was really funny. Me and Kelly Russell, we had a great idea to ask Pastor Brandon to speak to our kids I was like, let's go, man. That's awesome. So uh, we, we go after third experience one Sunday. And we're like, hey, Pastor Brandon, this is Kelly talking. She's like, would you want to go speak in G-Kids? And I was like, this is great. This sounds good so far. But the next couple of words she started saying, we didn't agree upon. And she said, and don't you worry. Don't worry. Listen, I got a plan. I got a plan. Preston Brown is going to switch with you, and you're going to go back there with the kids. And we all started laughing, like, ah, <laughs> that's a great joke, Kelly. <laughs> Next week rolls around, and, um, and uh, Kelly, she, uh, this was Monday, so really it was just the next day. She said, hey, can I call you? I was like, sure, I'm about to eat lunch. It's my favorite part of the day. Um, I love food, if y'all know. About to, you know, relax a little bit, eat my sandwich that I made. And she's like, can I call you? I was like, sure. She gives me a call. She's like, hey, listen. She's like, I got good news and I got bad news. I, well, they're both good news, all right? But she said, listen, got good news, bad news. I said, all right. She said, which one do you want first? I said, the good news, I guess. I mean, she said, well, Pastor Brandon said he will do it. I said, let's go. Like, what can be the bad news? <sighs> he said that he would only do it if you switch with him. And I was like, oh, come on, man. Come on. 
And so I'm, I'm here just because I, I didn't want to let y'all's kids down. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But I was like, I'm not going to let that happen. I was like, I want y'all's kids to hear our pastor, uh, Brandon. And, um, and I'm honored. I really am honored um, that he, he believes in me and trusts in me. And um, if you guys know my story, I'm going to share a little bit later. That just means the world to me. When people believe in me, because a lot of times I don't believe in myself. <laughs> So I wanted to open up with the story today that kind of leads us into our message. Um, and you can raise your hand. It's, this isn't a trick question or anything. Uh, did anyone ever have like their best memories at their grandparents when they were younger? Like with grand, at your grandparents, with your cousins, like that was your best memories. Man, if y'all like need some good stories, I could tell you guys some good stories with me and my cousins at my grandparents. And um, anyway, we, well, it was, this is a story about me and my uh, cousins at my grandparents. We were at my grandparents. I can't remember the day. This was forever ago, it feels like. You guys are probably thinking like, bro, you still look like a kid. I'm, okay, I'm 22. I'll go and get that out of the way. All right. I feel a lot older than when I look. People always tell me, oh, you're going to appreciate the baby face when you get older. <laughs> I, I wouldn't look old now. All right. That's all I want. I just want to look. Because people... <laughs> People will think I'm a kid sometimes. It's like, I'm like, bro, you see the ring? Like, I got proof. I got proof. So we're at our, we're at my grandparents, and um, me and my cousin Perry, we, man, he's like a brother to me. We, we decided that we wanted to build a fort, and uh, we would build these forts with chairs and blankets, and and this particular fort was in my grandmother's utility room, and we just had one rule. That's it, just one rule: no girls allowed, including women. So if my granny had to do utility, you know, go to the utility room, we're like, <clears throat> gotta wait until we're done with our fort, granny. Like, or or she's gonna have to go the back way around, which means you have to go outside and go through the garage. But basically, my other cousin Lana, um, as you know, Pastor Brandon's um, daughter Lana, she's my cousin, uh, Pastor Brandon's my uncle, so we're family. Uh, she was also there today, uh, or that day, and uh, she's she basically said, I'm going to get in this room no matter what, and we were we were back and forth all day. And of course, there's a door to this utility room. So we were kind of back and forth. She's like, open it. Can I come in? I'm like, nope. You know, close the door. And it was back and forth. And it escalated to the point where she was like, okay, I'm coming in no matter what. You're just going to have to get out of the way. And I said, no, you're not. So she started to, you know, pull the door open. I tried to push it. And we were going back and forth. My grandmother, she was right there to the kitchen. The kitchen's right around the corner of the utility room. And anyway... It got to the point where I was like, I've had enough of this. So I guess I was just a little bit stronger than Lana. And Lana had her fingers wrapped around the door, right? I said, boom. And she starts screaming. And I you know the door is shut by this point. So I'm just kind of hiding behind the door. And my grandmother, I told my grandmother, I said, listen, I had to ask, approve, uh, I had her to prove this uh, story. So I'll say, if y'all know my grandmother, she's the sweetest lady you ever met, uh, meet. She's a God-fearing woman. I told her I'd, you know, talk good about her first and just know this is all my fault this is all my fault what is about to happen because uh she's she would probably get embarrassed for me telling y'all everybody this but i was behind that door and after this happened my granny uh i feel like i didn't see this part because i was behind this door hiding from my grandmother but i feel like she kind of charged up her super strength like 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 one of these things you know like, right and then what she did is she did that is when i'm thinking in my brain and I'm not kidding, guys. I don't, I don't, I'm not making this up. She literally busts through the door, and I'm like not wanting the door to hit me, so what do I do? I fall on my back. My grandmother comes over me like this, and guys, I've never been more scared in my life. <laughs> and, and that's actually when I accepted the Lord and Jesus as my Savior. <laughs> yep. This actually happened, but that's actually not when I got saved. I just threw that in there, but... I was really scared, and she was like over me, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. And she said something about like, hey, she says, why can't you guys just get along and have peace? Why can't you guys just get along and have peace? And the reason why this story kind of popped up in my brain as I'm, uh, you know, kind of figuring out what I'm going to put in this sermon is that how many of you guys know that in our world today, whether it's our state, our city, um, country, right, that we've never been more divided, right? And there's so many bad relationships in our lives, either because people want to, or like they thrive off of argument, or they like to argue with you, or whatever it may be, put yourself in that situation. Who knows that there's a lot of division? 
And we've been studying uh, in the book of Colossians about the Apostle Paul. And what's so interesting about, the, uh, about Paul is that he, he's, he's in basically house arrest. And he's chained by his, his wrist. He's chained by his legs. So picture this with me. And I did some study and watched some sermons. And he's actually chained to a Roman soldier 24-7. Like, imagine having to use the bathroom. Like, whew, awkward. And so, but he, what he was doing is that he was writing these encouraging letters to the people at Coloss, the church at Coloss, right? And he, he was basically furthering God's kingdom in this moment. It's like, wow, that's crazy. Because if we're honest with ourselves this morning, if it was me, man, like, I'd be trying to use a toothpick to get out of the chains or something. Like, it's Mission Impossible. Like, y'all know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to escape this prison not trying to write letters or do, but it's so cool because, see, I believe that the Apostle Paul figured out something that myself um, has not figured out yet, and maybe you guys have not figured out yet, but I believe that Paul figured out, like, the peace that we long for. I really do think that because how can you have someone cuffed to you 24-7, but then also be writing encouraging letters to the church? Like, that's a constant reminder always behind you. Like, man, this guy put me in here. Wow. And he could have complained. He could have done anything other than write encouraging letters to the church. But he did it anyway. And that's, that's why I believe that the Apostle Paul knew this. He knew that there was a difference between worldly peace and spiritual peace. There's a difference. And we're going to kind of get into that today. I believe that worldly peace is this. If you actually look it up on Google, this is what it will say. Worldly peace is simply freedom from disturbance. Freedom from disturbance. It's kind of funny. I'm, I was uh, laughing during first experience because you always see all the speakers have their waters, but they never touch them, you know. I was like, nope, not today. Not today. <laughs> I actually got a real funny story. My dad, he, he's over there sitting with me. One of the first times I spoke at youth. I was like, man, how good was my sermon? You know, because, like, I want him to, like, criticize me. That's what I wanted. He's like, bro, it was good. I was like, dad, that's what you're supposed to say. Like, you're my dad. Like, what actually went wrong or what was? He said, well, dude, he's like, was your mouth dry? I was like, yeah, it was really dry. He's like, well, you kept licking your lips the whole time. I was like, he's like, you should probably drink that water sometimes. I was like, you're exactly right. So even though it's awkward when I drink this water in front of y'all, I don't care. Because I want to deliver this word good. And I don't want me looking at my lips distracting y'all. Like, I mean, come on now. All right. Worldly peace, freedom from disturbance. But I believe that spiritual peace is simply this. It's relational peace. Spiritual peace is relational peace. <clears throat> and so the question we're going to be wrestling with today is how do we experience spiritual peace? I pray my prayer is today is that I hope that I can communicate this to where you guys can know how to experience this peace because I've wrestled with this myself. So well, let's read our whole text one more time, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 through 17. We're going to read the whole text one more time, and then we're going to start diving into some scriptures. Is that cool with you guys this morning? Let's go ahead and read. Verse 12 says this, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, the Apostle, said, Apostle Paul says, we'll get into that a little bit later, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ and all of its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other uh, with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Is it okay if we teach a little bit this morning? It's fun to preach, but uh, this is kind of a teachable sermon, and um, this is what I believe that the Apostle Paul is trying to tell us today. I believe that the Apostle Paul is trying to tell us that there are three points 
There are three points, and then there, there are two action steps on how to experience spiritual peace in our relationships, and we're about to go through all that together. So are you guys ready? All right. So let's I'll go back to verse 12, and let's, let's get into it. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I believe point number one that the Apostle Paul wants us to know today is that we must clothe ourselves in holiness. We must clothe ourselves in holiness. And I already know what you guys are thinking. You're like, well, Preston, that's impossible. How can I clothe myself in holiness? Well, the holiness that I'm talking about is probably not what you're thinking. I'm not talking about the holiness that says you have to be perfect. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about you have to be completely sinless or have a perfect church attendance or you have to serve every single weekend. I mean, you can. That's fun. I'd do it. But you you don't have to. You get what I'm saying? See, the holiness that I'm talking about is I actually, Pastor Brandon actually referenced this one of the first weekends. I was like, I need to use that. The holiness that I'm talking about today is it's, it's a pure peace that comes with a loving and perfect relationship with God the Father. That's what it is. That's what holiness is. And so Paul, he lists all these things that we're supposed to clothe ourselves in, right? Like, uh, let's go through them. Tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. It's like, wow. But I believe that the apostle Paul wants us to clothe ourselves in holiness because once we clothe ourselves in holiness, which once we have a relationship with God the Father daily, that's when we can clothe ourselves in all those things that he mentioned, right? And I know some of you are going to walk out here today and just be like, okay, I'm going to do A, B, and C so I can achieve this holiness. Can I encourage you, church, that there's no way that you're going to be able to achieve this holiness physically. And this is what I want you guys to write down, is that spiritual peace is not something that you can obtain physically. You can only obtain it by having a relationship with the Father. It's not something that you can go out of here and say, oh, I'm going to get this peace because I'm going to do whatever it is to do and I'm going to have peace. No, you It's not like that. I believe that for us to be able to clothe ourselves in all the things that Paul says that we must clothe ourselves in, we have to have a relationship with God the Father. Not just one day a week, not just two days a week, but every single day. Who knows that's when real life change happens. It it, Honestly, change happens outside of these walls a lot of times. And it's because of our personal relationship with Christ, right? And so let's keep moving on. Let's move uh, to verse 13. It says this, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, that's important church, remember the Lord forgave you so you must forgive others. This one can be really hard. I believe this one is the stumbling block for a lot of people. But I believe point number two, we should write this this morning is we must forgive others as Christ has forgiven us. We must forgive others as Christ has forgiven us. I love that the apostle Paul, (laughs) he says, remember, I mean, I've dealt with forgiving people can be hard sometimes. Can we just all be honest this morning, right? Forgiving people can be hard. But what I've learned is especially just studying for this message that the apostle Paul says, Preston, when it's hard, remember what the Lord did for you. The Lord forgave me for my sins. And what did he do? He died on a cross, not just for us, but instead of us, right? And I believe Paul, the apostle Paul has told us that if we are struggling with forgiveness in our relationships with other people, we have to remember what Jesus Christ did for us when he forgave our sins, right? And so, I'll just tell you guys this too, and here's the hard truth, is that if you guys are struggling with forgiveness, you will not have spiritual peace in your relationships. And that's the truth. You're not going to have spiritual peace if you are not forgiving because, listen, this is what I want you guys to write down. Some of you are longing for spiritual peace, but you're settling for worldly peace. And what I mean is this. Some of you think that if you just free yourself from that person, If you just free yourself from that disturbance in your life, you think that you're going to obtain this peace that we're talking about today. But can I encourage you, church, that you will never obtain that peace like that. It's not by saying, oh, hey, that person goes to the second experience, so I'm going to go to the first experience. Like, then I'll have peace. I mean, you guys know what I'm saying? 
Or like, you know, that, that one person shops at Food Line every Sunday. You're like, I'm going to go every Monday. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, it's, there's no way, if you try to free yourself from that problem, free yourself from that disturbance in your life, and you think you're going to get peace from it, it's not going to happen. And so you're longing for something, but you're settling for something totally different. And, and you're never going to achieve what you're longing for. And this is the message that I want you guys to understand is that you can find spiritual peace through forgiveness. You can. And if that is your stumbling block, then remember that the Lord forgave you. And that's one of the most important things about Christianity is that the Lord forgave us. Lord forgave us. And so let's keep moving on, church. As we move on to verse 14, it says this, above all, here we go, important, above all, the Apostle Paul says, to clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all in perfect harmony. This won't be on the screen this morning, but this might be something you need to write down. I feel like we can all struggle with it sometimes. But me, we, you can give love a bad name. Yes, I did just quote Bon Jovi. That's a good song. Come on. No, I'm just joking. You don't have to write that down, but there is a third point, and that third point is this. We must love others as Christ first loved us. I mean, who knows that we really can give love a bad name sometimes. I believe a lot of times that the people that annoy us the most are the people that God has called us to love, and that's the truth. And who knows that there's always that one person or those set of people that it just ruffles our feathers, right? And we're just like, there's no way. I just, I want to free myself from that, right? But I believe God's called us to love those people. And the reason why I love what the, the Apostle Paul is trying to say is that I think it's so powerful that we have to realize as a church today that before we even loved God, before we even knew Christianity, God already loved us. And that's why the point says we must love others as Christ first loved us. The Bible says that God created all of us in our mother's womb, right? And we are specifically designed in a perfect image of God, right, in Genesis. And so it's so important that we love others. And here's the question I want you, us to, uh, I want you guys to ask yourself today is, what would our relationships look like if we loved others the way Christ loved us? What would the world look like if we loved others if, like Christ loves us? I mean, it, it would be, uh, it changed the world, right? I mean, just think that if we loved others the way Christ showed his love on the cross, there'd be less wars, there'd be less division, there'd be more peace, right? And that's why the Apostle Paul, I love how he says above all, he's basically saying above all that we've already talked about today, this is so important. Because if you don't love others the way Christ loves us, then you're not doing it right. And that's just it. And so you guys might be wondering, like, can I have relational peace through this without loving others? And, and I'll tell you that you can't. And, 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 and here's, here's, the, here's the fact that I want you guys to understand is that some of you will never have that relational peace because all you see is the sin in that person instead of realizing that that used to be you, right? That used to be me. Now, of course, we're all, you know, broken people, we all mess up, but we got a Savior who's forgiven us, forgave us for our sins, right? But what about the people who don't know the message? And we're like, oh, no way. Like, I know what type of person that is. And you start categorizing by their sin. And so you're like, I'm not going to love that person, but I believe God's called us to love those people. God has called us to love those people that all we see is their sin. You know what's crazy? God says that sin is sin. We're the ones that ca categorize it. Lying is just as bad as anything else. That's a lot worse than what you are thinking. And so I believe, and you guys can write this down, that how we show love to others will often reflect how much we love Jesus. How we show love to others will often reflect how much we love Jesus. And what I mean is this. I want you to ask yourself this, church. If you are not showing love to others, do you really love Jesus and what he did for you? 
It's a hard question. And I've been there. But I believe that Jesus is the example of love. I believe what Jesus did is the best example of love that anyone could hear. And if we're not grateful for what Jesus did for us, then we're not going to love others. But if we're going to be a church that says, we are grateful for Jesus' blood on that cross, I know I am. And if we're going to be a church that says we are grateful for it, then we must love others. Because how we love others is how we, and that reflects how much we love Jesus. Let's keep reading verse 15. It says this, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. I'm going to get a drink real quick. Y'all thought I was joking, huh? So funny, I was talking to my dad. Man, I was, I was on tears first experience. It was bad, y'all. It was really bad. They started singing, have thy way, and I was like, oh, you know. But if I can be honest with you guys, like I've just come to peace that I don't care what anyone thinks. If I, if I get up here and I'm emotional and I start crying, you might think that makes me less of a man, but I think it makes me more of a man, you know? And um, same with the water bottle thing. Cause I, you know, I, <laughs> like, this is awkward, yo. Like, but I don't care. I don't care. Verse 15 is so special to me because it, it, it's a little bit of my story. And, um, and so uh, we'll read it here. And uh, it says, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. The Apostle Paul says that the peace that we long for, he says, and then let the peace of Christ, meaning that the peace we long for comes from Christ. That's the peace we're all longing for and searching for today. The reason why this is so important to me, and I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable with you guys today. I'm nowhere close to a perfect man, and I don't think you guys thought I was, but I just want you to know I'm not. I'm only up here because of the grace and love of God, and I'm just super grateful. Um, but if you guys know a little bit of my story, you heard a little bit, um, Pastor Brandon, when he was doing the video. At the age of 15, I thought I, I felt like I was called in the ministry. Um, I felt like God actually spoke through someone to, to give me that calling. I had someone come up to me and say, you're going to be a preacher one day. I was 15, y'all. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I mean, I, it wasn't very important to me. I was just like, hey, I got called to preach, <laughs> you know, telling my friends. At the age of 16, this was at a church camp. At the age of 16, I went back to that church camp. And uh, this, is, this was so silly, but I'm so grateful that God answered it. I asked God to reaffirm this calling on my life. It's a, it sounds like a silly prayer, but he answered it. I asked that God would speak through someone else to give me that confirmation, and he did. And it was so cool because I prayed that prayer the Sunday night before we left. And that last night, someone else said the exact same thing. And it's like a light bulb went off in my head, like, ding, you know. And I, I just, I'll never forget, <clears throat> I've never felt so much love from Christ in that moment. I went to my cabin. This was, I was 16, y'all. Went to my cabin, got on my knees, and just started crying. But if I'm honest with you guys, I'm not proud of how I've handled that calling. I'm 22 now, and I cannot tell you guys how many times that I've said, God, you're not enough. I can't tell you how many times that I've, I've ran from this calling on my life. I didn't understand why God would call me to do something that I'm so afraid to do. Like, I, I would be fine being in the kids' ministry all the time. Like, I don't need to be up here. I don't want this thing to be about me. And, and I never understood, like, why would he call me to do something I'm so afraid to do? And I believe, and guys, this was not even a year ago. Like, this is something that I just recently came out of. And I, I've never heard the voice of God so clearly. He said, Preston, it's never been about you. So why do you let the weight be on you when it's not supposed to be. But I struggled, y'all. I struggled so much. I struggled so much. And I'm ashamed of it. 
I'm so ashamed. I, I've, I've turned opportunities down. I, I, I've turned multiple speaking opportunities down. Any next steps that I was afraid, I, I turned them all down because I basically said, God, you're not enough. Me? To speak in front of your people? No way. Like, no, like, let me be a small group leader. I mean, come on. Like, that's where I love small groups, you know? I was like, there's no way. And, uh, man, I'll tell you what. It was last December. Last December, God wrecked me. Um, I just got freshly married with my wife. We were on a trip with our whole family. We went to Gatlinburg, and we were, um, uh, me, Brandon, and my dad were just talking, hanging out. So powerful. I was struggling at the time. And this is, this is so silly, guys. I was struggling at the time to say, God, what, what do you want me to do? After he's already confirmed it twice, right? And I'm still struggling. And it's because I didn't have this peace with God. And when I was studying for this sermon, it was kind of hard because I would be, I would say myself as a, I'm, I'm a peacemaker. You know, like I would, I would sacrifice my feelings if you, if you want your way to be right. Like I would suffer. That would be me. Like, that's cool. Like, you want to be right? That's cool. I'll just, you know, whatever. But I didn't have peace in my relationship with Christ. And, and, and I feel like I've done A, B, and C. I, I got married. I got a good job. We got a house, right? I've done all the things. But there's still this, this hole in my heart. And I couldn't even explain it to you, of, of, of how to explain it. And I, I just remember that God said, it's because you're not doing what I've called you to do. And, and, and to go back to the trip, me, Pastor Brandon, and my father were talking, and I was talking to Brandon, and uh, I was like, man, I just really don't know what God wants me to do. He said, Preston, he said, just do what God's created you to do. Like, be who God's designed you. And, and, and there, there was a lot of peace in that, because I was wondering, I don't know if I should do this or do that, or if I should, like, how do I make A, B, and C, or whatever it is, and I was struggling with peace in my relationship with Christ. I remember having a conversation with one of my leaders and she told me that Preston, she, she said, you live life like this a lot of times as believers. We can live life like this, fist closed um, and our palms facing the ground. But she says, Preston, I want you to live life like this, open handedly. And when you live life like this, she says, God can give you so you can receive, but you can also give back to what he's blessed you with. And this was actually, what, what the conversation was actually, um, it, it, we were talking about tithing, right? We were talking about tithing. And she was encouraging me with this illustration. But what was really cool is that I took this illustration. I said, you know what? I'm not only gonna be like this in my, my giving, but I'm gonna be like this for my whole life. God, you can have my calling. It's yours. God, let your will be done in my life. God, you can have my job. You can have my relationship with my wife. God, I'm gonna live like this and whatever comes and whatever goes, Lord, I know it's from you. And when I started living like this church, please don't miss this. And when I finally surrendered to God with everything, because listen, I've been there. I've said all the right things. God, I know you can provide water from the rock. God, I know you can split the Red Sea, right? I would say all those things, but I did not mean it. I did not mean it. And it wasn't until I actually believed and until I fully surrendered my whole life, everything in my life, I'm talking about everything, that's when I finally achieved the peace that I longed for. And, and this is what I want you to know, church, that the, the peace that you long for is a surrendered life to Christ. How many of you know we have so many things in our lives? I mean, goodness, me and my wife, we think we're so busy all the time. It's like, man, like we always got something going on. And I'm sure it's the same for you guys. How many of you guys know like we're always being pulled and tugged and all these things? And, and, and sometimes it's hard to surrender our whole life, to just say, God, <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen, but God, I know you're gonna make it okay. Can I tell you guys something really powerful? Not to glorify me, but to glorify God. I was talking to a guy before, after the first experience, and he said, dude, were you nervous? I said, dude, I was so nervous. But 
I said, I, I, I cannot explain it. I said, even though I was nervous, there was this peace. That I just knew that, man, if I got up here, I tripped on those steps or something, which I almost did. I really almost did. I almost tripped. I was like, whatever happens, I know that God's in control. And I know that whatever I say, whatever I do, that God's going to make it right. And he's going to take care of me. And there's a peace in that. And so some of you might be wondering, like, well, what is a surrendered life to Christ? It's simply this. It's, it's saying, God, your way is better than my own, and you are enough. That's it. That's it. When we finally say that, God, let your will be done in my life, and you are enough, that's when we'll achieve that peace. When we were singing that song, um, Have Thy Way, which is really awesome, when we were singing that song, can I tell you guys that less than a year ago, I probably, I, I could sing that song, but I, I wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't mean it. Lord, have thy way. Wouldn't mean it. I'm serious. Like, it, this was how I was living. But it wasn't until I fully surrendered. Oh, and that's why I don't sing, by the way. <laughs> My sister has the singing. My sister's good at singing. We got to get her up here. It wasn't until I fully surrendered my life that that's when I achieved the peace that I longed for, saying, God, you are enough, and God, your will be done in my life. And so when you surrender, I just want you guys to write down, when you surrender your life to Christ, you can live in peace and have a thankful heart. Because the Apostle Paul, in that same verse, verse 15, it says to live in peace and have a thankful heart. And so we can live in peace and have a thankful heart when we surrender our life to Christ. When we surrender, when you surrender your life to Christ, you can live in peace and have a thankful heart. Let's keep reading. Verse 16. Now Paul, I believe, gives us two action steps. And so those were the three points. We have to clothe ourselves in holiness, forgive as we have been forgiven, and love as Christ first loved us. Three points. But now I believe Paul is saying, here's the action. I need you to put this in the action. Here we go. Verse 16 says this, let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. I believe the apostle Paul makes it very clear that we have to have the message about Christ in our hearts. We, all of its richness, he says, let it fill your lives. And so that's the action. Now we need to let this message fill our lives. And how do we do that? Is we say, God, whatever it is that you're, that's in my life, I, I'm putting you first in that, right? It, it's saying that, God, I'm going to take everything out of my life and you're going to be for any time that Anytime that there's something in your life that is in a bigger priority than God, that's filling your life. Whether that's work, whether that's people, whatever it may be in your own situation, if something is filling your life other than Christ's message, then we're missing it. Christ's message needs to fill our lives. And let me back up real quick. I said there was two actions. We already went over the first action. The first action was to surrender your life. The second action is to fill your life with Christ's message. Forgot to say that when we went over the first one. So Apostle Paul says, okay, we have these three points. Clothe ourselves with holiness. Forgive as we have been forgiven and love others as Christ loves us. Then he says, put these two things into action. He said, I need you to surrender your life to Christ fully. And then I need you to let his message live in your life. And you might be thinking, well, what is his message? His message is simply this. It's his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And that should be the most important thing about being a Christian, is that we have Christ's message and his, 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 his good news, right? Which is the gospel, his good news that he got back up. He defeated sin, right? And he's saying, if you have that in your life, feel in your life, I want you guys to write, that, write this down. If you have that feel in your life, we will experience peace in our relationships when the message about Christ is living within us. We will experience spiritual peace in our relationships when the message about Christ is living 
within us. <clears throat> and here's the, here's the fact, church, is that without the peace of God ruling over our relationships, we will fail as the church to show the love of Jesus to the world. We will fail. Anytime we try to have relationships without bringing Christ into them, it will always fail. And we will fail to show the love to them that Christ has called us to love them. And so we have to have Christ's message living within us. And so Colossians 3, verse 17, it says this right here. It says, and whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. This is so important. The reason why this is so important is because I believe that Paul is saying this, church, to live it out. Live it out. He said, now whatever you do, whatever you do or even say, he says, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus. Church, we've, we've answered the question here today. How do we experience spiritual peace? By applying these three points to our lives and then fully surrendering our life and then saying, God, I'm gonna have your message rest in my soul. And when you do these things we've talked about, like that's my prayer today, that you take this message and you just don't go home and you turn on the game or whatever, but you take this message and you apply it to your life. Let it be the representation of your life. If you want to have peace in your relationships with other people, I believe if you follow what we've talked about today and apply it to your life, you can have that peace in your relationships. And so I believe he's saying, live it out. He said, church, I've given you the answer, but are you going to live it out? And that's your choice. I want y'all to know you have a choice. Many of us can come in here every single Sunday and not take a next step. I've been there. But what's your next step today? What's going to be that next step that say, hey, I'm going to change my life forever if I make this next step? Church, I encourage you not to leave this building the same as you walked in. That's my encouragement to you today. The key to my sermon is this. Take my whole sermon to wrap it up into one sentence. It's this right here. The peace you long for is not found in freedom from disturbance. Let me put that in other words. The peace you long for is not found in this world. The peace you long for is not found in whatever is keeping you captive. The peace you long for is not found in anything that this world can offer. It's not found in your job. It's not found in how much money you make. It's not found in anything but God. And that's what I want you guys to write down is that the peace you long for is not found in freedom from disturbance, but by our relationship with the Father. And that's it. This peace that the Lord gives is something special. And I, I can say that I've I, I felt that today. I've felt it today. And I believe that if we all take these next steps today to invite Jesus into our lives, we will have spiritual peace in our relationships. I really do believe that, church. To kind of, I was, uh, I was talking to someone after the experience, and they shared to me what, what was really cool, what, what he started thinking about, and I was like, I'm going to use that. He said, to go back to what we were talking about earlier, about worldly peace and spiritual peace, the difference between the two. What's so cool is that if you guys think about God, and what he did for us by sending his son, Jesus. You can say that God had the chance to choose worldly peace, but he chose spiritual peace for us by sending his Christ, his son, Christ Jesus, to die for us. Come on, somebody. Come on. When I was preparing for this uh, sermon, I read this verse, verse of the day. It's in Zephaniah 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 17. And I just wanted to read it over you guys. I wanted to read it over you guys. Maybe it will speak to you, but it was special to me when I was preparing for this message. It says this, for the Lord, your God, the Lord, we're all here to serve today. The Lord, your God is living among you. He's here. Can you feel his presence, church? He is a mighty savior. 
this is what I want to prophesy over you guys today. I want you guys to take this into your heart. He will take delight in you with gladness. He loves you, church. He loves you. And guess what? With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. Church, I don't know where you're at today. I don't know. But I know we all have a next step. And so if you were here today and you're saying, Preston, I've been struggling. I've been struggling to find this peace in some of my relationships at work. I've been struggling to have peace in my family. I've been struggling to have peace with some cousins or whatever it may be, brothers, sisters. You're struggling with peace and you're saying, Preston, I need to come to know this peace that you're talking about today. Here in a moment, we're going to have a team of people come up and I'm going to give you that opportunity. If you need prayer, if you're saying, Preston, I just want someone to pray for me. I want to come to know this peace that you've talked about today. We're going to give you the opportunity. Or maybe you're here at your first time. I'm like, why is this kid on stage? Maybe you're here and you're saying, Preston, I just want to come to know this Savior that you've talked about today. What we say back in G Kids is that we say, kids, if you want to come to know Jesus as your best friend forever, then you can make that decision today. If you want that church, if you want to have Jesus as your best friend starting today, you can make that decision. You can make that decision. Or maybe you're here today. And I really do mean this, church. I really do mean this. Maybe you're here today. And you're like, Preston, you know, I'm not necessarily struggling with peace or anything like that. Preston, I, I'm just broken myself. I've been dealing with a lot, Preston, and I could use some prayer. And if that is even you, I'd encourage you to take a next step. Whatever it may be, one, one thing that I've realized is that next steps is what grows our relationship with Christ. Because we're stepping out of our comfort zone and into God. 